What's up, guys? Welcome to another local band smoker. I'm your host, Tyler Most BG, hanging out with my man Lloyd Rattle Sky Ratowski, aka Burn Like Stars, and we have the legend himself, Mr. <gasps> Kevin Lyman, on the show. How are you guys? Great, to, great to see you, and uh, we're still working in the world of Zoom, but uh, nice to see you guys. Yes, uh, the world is crazy right now. We appreciate you doing this. No problem. And you said you're in uh, Pasadena right now. How is uh, how is life aside from COVID for you? It's interesting. You know, I'm I, you know I'm you know full time professor at the University of Southern California, so we're back on campus for a week. Uh, it's interesting how I think getting kids to wear masks right was harder than keeping people in line to get into a concert. You know, it's, a, <laughs> it's you know I, I walk around the classroom and you know uh, it's it, it's you know, definitely we were hoping that we'd all be past this. I think a little bit farther. I think you know as we all know, there's a lot of questions in the business on you know what type of large gatherings you can. It's very hit and miss. You know, they there's a you know a not you know EDM show probably 40,000 people this weekend and then you have a club show canceled and everyone's just trying to figure out past their way but I man did I go to an event this weekend mm -hmm. I went up to the the throwdown the world's largest cornhole tournament I played in oh week. nice cornhole's yeah. getting big I saw it in ESPN did you do it? recently did you play in it or you're just yeah, I played in it there was a thousand teams Wow. And, uh, you know, I probably came in like 998. No, but it was <laughs> like the top pros in the world and you got to play and it was a blind draw. So it was really, and the people came from all over the country and uh, I was you know, with the hotel I was in, there was like a team of 40 from Hawaii that was there. So wow. it's just different seeing lifestyle, seeing how I think people want to gather like with like-minded people, you know, cornhole. I never, who would ever think that 2000 people would play cornhole and like 2000 people would come and watch. People Guys. want something to do, man. It just brings them together. Absolutely. So it was, it was good. You know, we're, we're picking and choosing and trying to stay safe. And, and you said you were teaching at USC. That's that's the Thornton School of Music, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been just going into my, believe it or not, fourth year. A year and a half of them were over the pandemic and on Zoom and in person. And uh, I'm enjoying it. You know, I'm putting a lot of energy into it. I, I you know, I'm, I'm producing a couple of events coming up, but... You know, right now, just going you know, to focus on this new young generation that's – and they're starting to get jobs now. That's what's the coolest thing. They're, they're <laughs> going to make you know, the job workforce where, you know, the first year and a half was tough. And and now we're, we're starting to see them and got a lot of people out working at festivals like Ohana coming up and some of the things like that. So I'm pretty excited about, you know, what I'm doing right now. And then, you know, we've got the podcast that I'm doing, the My Work Life podcast. And I've seen that. That's chill to watch. And I'm putting up this uh, recovery event with Macklemore up in Vegas in a couple of weeks that I'm doing. We're doing a recording for iHeart, so it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a, you know, keeping busy. I'm busier Definitely. than ever. Definitely so keeping busy. Definitely keeping busy. And and then for someone that's never heard your podcast, which is called My Warped Life, can you can you kind of just give us a breakdown of what the podcast is about? <laughs> well, we were trying to. We were, my wife was trying to get me out in the garage a little more often over the pandemic. <laughs> I was only out here teaching two days a week, and she's like, "You need a hobby. Like, you need something." And uh, you know, I'd go out and play golf, through it, but I thought it was a good time to start putting these stories together and bringing people together. You know, my warp life translates to so many people I've met. So, you know, they've led a warp life. Most people like we come across in our industry and we travel around and do, don't lead a traditional life. So their stories find them. So I've, I've had everyone from like Bob Hurley and the history of Hurley on there. Um, I, you know, I did a feature on the Van Doren family. You know, they crossed my life, of course, with the band's warp tour, but other ways. Um, gosh, I had some fun interviews this weekend. Uh, Jimmy Lindbergh and Pot, he, uh, Pennywise will be on an episode coming up that I'm blending him in with uh, with Steve Caballero. So, oh, yeah. you know, Legends. now their new a project they do with a young woman named Emily Nielsen on the punk rocks and paintbrushes. So it's just kind of starting to starting to roll. You know, people want to you know the interviews, and I think in the long run, I was telling my wife, it's a ton of work. You guys know that. Yeah, it's, you know, a it's lot. not easy to put together. Um, all of a sudden, you're like, I remember podcasts are like, you'd have two little microphones, you talk, and oh, that was a podcast. Now you got to film it, you got to, you know, edit it. It's got to be, a, it's a lot of work, but um, I'm enjoying it. Uh, have my good, you know, friend Tony, who knew none of this stuff. I met him moreover during the right before the pandemic. We played golf and stuff, but then he loves hearing these stories that you know maybe some of my friends have heard, heard ten times, but they're all new to him. Yeah. That's uh, and I'm sure you've got thousands and thousands of stories. When I when I was doing a little bit of like back research 
Well, not only that, I used to watch the that one show that was on. It was either on Fuse or MTV. I can't recall. Yeah, the Warped Roadie, the Warped Roadie show that was happening. Yes, and TV. and and I recall a band called Crossfaith basically getting kicked off. And I look, I ended up looking up how how many other bands have been kicked off. And I did some research and found out that Hatebreed was actually invited back. And I was wondering if you could explain. Well, well, Crossfaith was never kicked off. What I did with Cross Crossfaith, man, you know, talk about people who overindulge, let's just say a little bit, you know? Yeah, okay. What I would do is I would put them on at 11 o'clock in the morning to think that it was going to affect them, like partying all night, got to play your set at 11 o'clock in the morning. They just felt it was like more time to drink afterwards. Like, oh, got my set done. <laughs> I'm still drunk from the night before. Maybe I'll take a nap after and get started again. So that backfired. Hate breed. You know, me and Jamie became pretty good friends down the road. You know, I, I don't, I, to be honest, people come to me all the time. I go, oh man, I had a run in with you at some point or this. And I'm like, what? I don't remember. And that's yeah. how you get through the, that's how you get through this business. You know, you, you know, we're, we work in a very emotional business. Sometimes emotions run high. Uh, you, you get into it for a moment, but you have to be able to just move on. So with Hatebreed, they were younger. They were so they're all you know, kids half the time. You know, they were super young when I worked with these people a lot of times the first time. And then I run across them later on and they played that Mayhem Festival that mm. I uh, produced also. Got to know Jamie. We've had, I've, I've been on his podcast and we've gone fishing together. Uh, you know, I have a charter boat down that I go fishing out of Florida and he's met me there and gone fishing with me before. So, you know, I like to think that we, we, it's better to go through life and figure out, you know, that you, you maybe have an issue, but you can grow, come back together in common ground. I mean, that's where we're at with society right now. I mean, we've got to start figuring out some common ground that we can start working on or, or we're Preach. all fucked, to be honest, you know, I mean, you know, it's just, it's gotten so ridiculous. And, you know, I, I was out the other day and, you know, I, I sit with people and, and, and I, I tend to try to listen. I don't think we listen right now. We have to listen to people find that common ground and build off of that nurse going to that emotional reaction where you just are like, F that guy. Oh my God, this. And that's what so people go to in such a quick way. Now. Lloyd, do you have any, do you have anything you want to throw out? I've got a page full of questions, but is there anything? I mean, I got a few and you can answer them in your own time. I'm curious. <clears throat> Cause I, I can't, I haven't looked that far back. Were you in any uh, bands yourself um, before no. any of this war tour stuff? No, I mean, I worked in the clubs of Los Angeles for 13 years before that, running all the shows for the company Golden Voice. And if you're out here on the West Coast, every one of them is the promoter of Coachella now and, and all, a lot of big festivals. But I, I was horrible. I couldn't play a note, and I still can't play a note. <laughs> and I was a shitty skateboarder, you know. Uh, so, But I lived in a house where skateboarders and musicians lived, so I knew how to get on the phone. And rent came due every uh, month, no matter what. So I would find work for all of us to go do. And a lot of it was around shows. You know, Ooh. it was also like, you know, moving a warehouse, whatever we needed to do to get by. And as I kind of put my business chops together doing that. But I love the I love action sports and I loved music and was able to find a pathway that I was able to do for over 40 years. That's so sick. I, uh, my second one was what was going to. Uh the mental that goes into having to manage all these different shows. These are all kids. Mostly. Sometimes you get older bands and stuff, but how do you just keep like, how do you manage so many artists and so many young kids that want to go out and party and they don't realize that this is like kind of a job and you have to show up ready to work and stuff like just what goes through that? Well, I think by the time they, you know, a lot of times, or if I was working with them and by the, at a certain point, I think, you know, when I started warp tour, I was hanging with my peers. You're talking about, you know, Pennywise, No Effects, you know, Bad Religion, those type of bands. So I was kind of traveling with my peers and, and uh, you know, they, I earned, I knew, they knew I could work hard because I worked, you know, when they came through clubs, I was the guy running the venues, I ran the shows, but it was hard, it was harder back then sometimes with my peers to get them to pay attention. But as I was growing, I was turning into either a mentor or disciplinarian. And maybe the party for me went out the window a little bit. But I, you know, I would have this moment, and by the, and most people realize, I think, because I was up there early in the morning, I was out working, I never took any of this for granted. That I think I earned their respect. That this, right. they saw how hard I was working, and you know what? And then it got to the point where I just didn't have the patience. Like, if you're going to come out here and don't take it serious, you know, you've got to find something else to do. Okay, definitely. Right. I'm sure. Laying down the law. 
I'm sure you get asked all the time for advice that you could give to Ban. <laughs> I'd actually like to ask you, what's the best advice you've ever been given? Ooh, take what you do seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. You gotta I be able know. to have a little fun. You know, it is, and it's also like you know, people don't think they're replaceable, but we are all going to be replaced at some point. And then later in life, you know, you start realizing the only thing you're going to run out of time, if you're enjoying what you're going to do, you're going to run out of time. You're never going to run out of things to do. You know, for me, you know, it's it's challenging yourself. You know, I, I, you know playing in, it sounds weird, but playing in a professional cornhole tournament this weekend was a, a hey, pro sports at 60. I missed out when I was oh. playing. It's probably the only sport you can go do now and actually sit there and play <laughs> Uh, but I got tired. You know, you realize that you, you, you have to start understanding your limitations and then using what you've built up, those strengths right now that you still have. You know, um, I can't go out and work a two month tour where I'm working 20 hours a day. It just I was, by, you know, I was always able to do it, but there's no way after a pandemic, the muscle memory, that grind that you were so thought was normal. You back off of it. And that's why we're seeing so many people get out of touring right now. Mm. They're like, wow, I knew no different lifestyle. Now you can mm. actually have a backyard. You can get together with friends, maybe go to bed at a normal time and oh, you know, get up and have some, you know. So now I'm channeling that energy through some of this other stuff now that probably uses my brain a little bit more than just that sheer will to get it done. Lloyd, have you, have you ever had the opportunity to go to the Warp Tour in the past? I've been to the one uh, in Cali off the piers. I think I've been to, I forgot where it was off the piers. It was one of the Pier 39, somewhere around yeah, there. Pier 30, 32, wow. Pier cool. 32, yep. Um, I've been to that one twice. Um, I tried to play one of them a second time by sitting out playing acoustically, but I was not very good at that time, so it didn't matter. And then I <laughs> think I went to one near New York not too long, uh, the last one that went around. I, I feel like I've been to at least eight or nine. And uh, I, one one time I actually met you, Kevin, this this stuck with me ever since. And this had to have been at least 10, 10 to 12 years ago. You were actually, we were all on the line to enter the, the gates as soon as it opens. And you were out there fixing the fencing or something. <laughs> I just found it incredible that the man that puts it on is doing some of the grunt work. So kudos to you, sir, for, for you getting your hands right, dirty. Yourself, damn it. I always remember that. I always believe that, you know, go out there. For me, a lot of it was like, get that show set up as quick as you can in the morning, get everyone in. Cause I did not want to hear from kids and go, I was in line and didn't get to see my favorite band based on that yeah. schedule. Yeah. So I was, you know, I, I enjoyed those front gates. To be honest, every day, those front gates were so important to me, getting them lined up right, working with the kids, getting them separated with the canned foods or whatever we were doing. So we could get you into that venue as quick as possible. And we had to push the venues too, because mm -hmm. they're used to people coming later in the day for a festival or a concert. Mm -hmm. And we're like, 90% of these guys are gonna be in line when it's time to go. And and if you're not ready, I'm gonna hear about it tomorrow online or you know inside the crowd, someone's gonna come up to me and yell at me for missing their favorite band. So, oh, and I liked the physical work, I always did. I was never a person that sat in the production office. Sure, Any leadership too. Whether it was Taste of Chaos, Mayhem, any of the other festivals I did, I just like to be out there because you know what? That's the energy. That's why we do it. Um, I did at least, and you know, I always told people every day at Doors, if you don't get goosebumps, it was time to maybe start figuring something else out. Yeah. Um, you know, and you open Absolutely. those doors, and that energy would get you going, and then you got to the next show, and you might be. I mean, we did 25 shows in a row in 2000, and eight. 25 different cities in a row. No one tours that hard. Yeah. You guys bust it you miss every it? day. You miss it a little bit? Uh, you know, I miss it. And then what, as hot as it's been in Southern California, <laughs> and now I'm that guy that's going, this is effing hot. And I never was hot. But my body, my system's changed. Uh, you know, you miss it and then something comes up. Like, you know some weird old lawsuit or something that you're still dealing with. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, the business has changed a lot. You know, I, I, I watched, you know, bands and, and trying to put this stuff together. It's not, you know, it was just, it was an immense amount of work. And, and even though I, my wife's like, wow, you still work so hard. It's just a different type of work because once I'm done with you guys today, I mean, it's only almost five o'clock here. 
I've got school buttoned up for tomorrow. I'm working on this broadcast. So we went through a broadcast meeting. But you know what? I'm going to walk inside and like when Let's we're done. Let's go, bro. Let's go. Cook up some food and uh, have a friend come over. One of my one of my students that I, like I would say all of them are students. He wasn't a student at school, but he was a student of touring. Um, it's just got hired by the Pearl Jam tour. So he's going to come oh, over and, wow. and introduce me now to, and tell me about his new job and that's the kind of legacy you want. You want to hear people oh, that are be students that, that are carrying awesome. it on, you know, that are <laughs> you know, carrying it on. And I think he's excited to introduce me to his new girlfriend. You know, it's that's weird so because I, in some way I'm kind of like that parent figure for a lot of these people. Of course, they have their parents and all that, but they want to show me that, hey, my life's moving forward. I was maybe that punk rock kid that you were, Kevin, back then and didn't really quite know what I was going to. And now I've got this. I'm going on this amazing tour got a nice girlfriend i'm kind of moving forward so you've made a lot of that going guys, on right you changed his life you helped him that's awesome yeah. that is very you know, cool that's what we should be doing in life we should all be helping just a little bit whatever it is you know if you got an opportunity and now it's my students man i got a lot of hard-working students right now and they're all going to be working shows in the next few weeks that want to go do them i must address a rumor that i've heard um there's okay. there's a rumor that that franz of attila is interested in taking over the rights i'm sure you've answered this a hundred times but i think franz should start his own tour that's what i, I was thinking i was always saying like when i started warp tour a lot of people accused me of wanting to be the next lollapalooza yeah and even though i worked on lollapalooza in 1991 i was a stage manager and i worked for four years on lollapalooza I told people, no, I'm doing my own tour my own way, and I'm waiting for someone to kick my ass and do something better. They That's what I always say. brand name, bro. That's all he wants is the name. And, and you know what? I'm like, the Warp Tour had its time. It was a lot of people. You know, I look at that photo behind you. That's the one from Atlantic City, I think. You know, they all gathered, <laughs> and now they moved on in their lives. You know, they're all doing some stuff. There's no way you know what that is just by looking, really. Yes, I do. That's work to Atlantic City. I can tell you right there. That's, That's so amazing. Great. That's it's cool. amazing. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I was at every show, but I'm. I think someone's going to. You know, someone's thinking it out there, and you know, I'm it's like, SBG. you know, so and local band smoke out tour. Here we go. Yeah, you know, someone's gonna have to figure it out and and do something and build something better than Warped Tour. How many right, local bands only, no famous bands. It's all local bands going on tour. If you <laughs> if you could only pick three bands that for some reason weren't successful in maybe Mayhem or Taste of Chaos or Warped that were that were maybe some of your favorite bands that uh, you helped be involved in these tours, who would those three bands be? That never really achieved the success that you had hoped for, maybe? Correct. That's, that's, that's what I'm asking. That's a, that's a very interesting question, you know, when you when you think about it. Uh, you know, and success is at a different level, you know. But I think there was bands that had maybe timing. They ended up like a band like H2O from the East Coast. Um, that band wrote amazing songs, but they always seemed just a little off. Like, you know, they... They had songs that during a different time. Now they they they're a touring band. They worked and they, and they they made livings and they're doing their thing. But that's a band I thought could have been massive, mm -hmm. um, um, like massive. Like you know they they do clubs and stuff still and they're doing those things. Uh, I'm got it. It's an interesting thing. I'm trying to go back through all these bands and go like who played and just like disappeared after that. You know, because even like someone like Mod Sun, who's having a lot of success, like uh, like when he goes on tour, he was so good and so cool and then uh, disappeared. But now he's he kind of up with Machine Gun Kelly mm -hmm. and, and he's having a second shot at it. Um, there was a band called Wallpaper, but that got hard for them. They were so great live, so great live. But that was turned into Ricky Reed, the producer who's produced all these mega hits for people. He started producing music for other people and the band just kind of went away. But that's an interesting question that I might have to go back through and look myself because a lot of uh, memories in there. He has yeah, one of those memories that you, you, you kind of go. But there's so many bands that, you know, that you it's a lot of time. It's it's timing, but it's also hanging in the game. Sometimes if you hang in the game. That sound you have could be all of a sudden hot a couple years later, two, three years later. Hmm. Yeah, I was, re I was watching a movie the other day. I don't recall the movie, but uh, this, the quote was, "Most statistically, most bands don't fail. They break up. That was the quote, and I found that pretty interesting. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I think that's a good quote. 
Kevin's pretty busy. Maybe we got one more each, Lloyd. Uh, do you have one last one you'd like to ask him? Man, I got so many, bro. Um, <laughs> I guess I like asking the like the off one. How come? Or if you do, I I don't know. But how come you don't manage more bands? I feel like you would be really good at managing bands and helping them like achieve goals. I, I managed mean? bands at one point. I managed that band H two O. I used to okay. manage, I used to manage less than Jake. And I the have Ataris, a by them. the Ataris. Um, I enjoyed it, but I, I'm not really good at like micro things. Like if you okay. need to get your you need to get your guitar fixed or your horn fixed or whatever, you know. I was more like, hey, you want to open for Bon Jovi? I'm gonna go figure out how to get that done, which I got. You would have been a better agent wow. then. Okay. Less than Jake got the open for Bon Jovi, you know. Yeah. It, you know, but less than Jake. People hadn't gone to Europe. I figure that out, but but like. I kind of am that big, and I've always had great, and it's a lot of times it's women that work with me that that are the nuts and bolts, like the little behind the scene, like constantly. Right now I have Kat, she's a young woman, and she came up through our system, and she's now co-producing this event. It's got Macklemore and a bunch of people playing, and, and you know, she's so detailed where I can look at that big thing and go, okay, just move this one little piece to make it easier, or, uh, you know, things like that. Um, yeah, managing, Managing, like you're taking people's lives in your hand. Yeah, so you'd be a better agent then. You want to do the big stuff. You want to get oh, I don't want to be an agent, agent either. Trust me, agents only need to know two things in life. I need more money and what's the billing. So, uh, you know, that's, you know, but cool. like, more it was like strategic, working strategically with these people. Cool. Very, Very cool. cool. All right, that was mine, BG. Go ahead. My last question is, uh, what is one thing you have yet to do and or something that you wanted to do during a festival where everyone else just said, absolutely not, legalities, we can't we can't do this, but you still want to do it? Well, I don't know. You know, we had human cannonballs at Warped Tour. Uh, we've had <laughs> motorcycle jumping. We were the first freestyle motocross traveling. I, you know, Kerry Hart and Larry Linklog and Ronnie Feist and Brian Deegan. I mean, I was able to bring wrestling on the road. Uh, you know, I, I trying to think, you know, what we didn't do. I think we tried one time. We tried to merge up with paintball. You know, um, we did. Oh, they, my gosh. They kind of wrong. Shoo, 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 you know, shoo. Um, I, 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 I pushed my I had a great insurance agent. He says, yeah, Kevin, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Hell yeah. we always figured it out. You know, when we started out, the idea of bringing a vert ramp out and letting people, you know, bring, even though they were pro athletes, like shocked people. I think now it would be harder. You would go, I want to bring this out. And they're like, oh, no, the insurance is too expensive. Yeah, yeah now right. everyone's sensitive. Now they would talk you out of it. But I, I'm trying to think, you know, what I – I'm starting to see lifestyle and music really where, the, where like that sport takes the lead where this weekend even. And I go back to what I saw this weekend with, with Cornhole. You know, there was 5,000 <laughs> people there. But they had bands. There was music that played. Oh, but, it, but it was driven by – the activity. So it was a community that came together that loved to play a sport. And then there was music as something as entertainment, you know, so. I want a Lyman cornhole jersey. Well, <laughs> you know, and that, yeah, it's funny. Like I, I knew no. I was, I knew I was in trouble. I showed up like in a bathing suit and a t-shirt and these guys looked yeah, like, they looked like NASCAR teams, you know, <laughs> coming in. and I'm like, the first time I got matched up, we had to play seven games the first day and we, we ended up two and five. Which I'm glad we won a couple games. It was awesome yeah. just to win a couple games. But the first time the guy showed up in the, the NASCAR jersey, I go, oh, I'm, I'm screwed. I'm That's screwed. It. <laughs> He's sponsored. Sponsored cornhole. Always yeah. the bigger fish out there. <laughs> yeah. At Kevin Lyman on Twitter. He's the founder and operator of the Kevin Lyman Group. And he is the host of what you guys should be checking out. It's called the My Warped Life Podcast. Kevin, you are absolutely awesome for doing this. We Give greatly, the greatly worthy. appreciate it. Give him a hit. Oh, the thank yeah, thank you for <laughs> having me on, you guys. It's great to see you both and wishing you the best of success. You as well, Aww. sir. Cheers and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.